Hey guys, Mr. Gibson here, uh, ready for your next lesson in cryptography. In this unit, we're going to try and change tracks here a little bit. We've been focusing mostly on creating ciphertext using a bunch of different algorithms, all different general substitution ciphers, Caesar ciphers, multiplicative cipher, affine cipher, all of these monoalphabetic substitution ciphers have been the focus so far. But we're going we're gonna to flip it backwards now. We're going to figure out how, if we have ciphertext and we don't have the key, could we figure out which method and which keys were used to generate the ciphertext? This is what we call cryptanalysis. It's when we attempt to recover plain text without knowing anything about how it was, the ciphertext was created. And the first method that we're going to look at using to determine plain text is what's called a brute force method. Brute force method is a method where you literally try all the possible keys for a, a given algorithm. So say we have this ciphertext here and we have some reason to believe it was enciphered using the Caesar cipher. We can talk a little bit later about how maybe we would know that, but for now let's just make that assumption. The good news about the Caesar cipher is that there's only 26 possible keys. So if we just try all 26, we could get 26 candidates for our plain text. And because there's only 26, we can kind of stare at this for a minute and realize that key 7 is the one that has a candidate that looks like it has some English language in it. And we're done. We, we did all 26 and we did it. And But the computer, we, as we've seen, it, it shouldn't be too hard to generate these 26 candidates. Um, one thing that you might notice here is that it was very visual. What we had to do is actually visually inspect all 26 outputs or 26 candidates and figure out which one looks like it has... English in it. And for 26 of them, that's not too bad, but let's, let's look at another cipher, the affine cipher. And for the affine cipher, there's a lot more possibilities. So when we start brute forcing this, we're trying all the possible keys to create our candidates, we're going to have pages and pages and pages of candidates because there's just so many key pairings. And in fact, we should know that there are 312 candidate texts possible for the 312 keys that there are for the affine cipher. And if you were eagle-eyed as I was going through all 312, you might have noticed that it was the additive key of 13 with the multiplicative key of 9 that is the one that generated something that looked like English, and it looks like that. But that, again, is very visual, and when there's more than 26, and only 312, and in the grand scheme of things, 312 isn't that many possible keys. We're going to study ciphers in this course that have thousands and millions of keys. Um, trying to visually inspect and find the one that looks like English is not going to be the most efficient use of our time. So while brute force works when the number of keys is relatively small, and because we're not doing this by hand but with a computer, when we say relatively small, that could be in the thousands or several thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands, and it wouldn't be too hard for a computer to at least generate all those candidates. But we're going to need a much more efficient way to score those candidates to figure out which one looks like English because we're not going to want to keep visually looking through the piles and piles of candidate text to figure out which one is actually our plain text. So that's where we're headed in this unit. We're going to try and find a few ways to, to recover those keys and recover the plain text without having to wade through a sea of potential decrypted messages. And that's brute forcing. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.